You all know, inshallah, that today marks the first day of the month of Rajab. And uh, we can certainly spend a lot of time talking about the benefits and the importance of this as a milestone, as a spiritual milestone. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. I thought I would just mention a couple of things. Clearly, the month of Rajab, inshallah, we'll get an opportunity to talk about this over the next weeks. But if we don't, we can make an effort ourselves to look into these things. It has numerous religious events. So informing ourselves about those events. Today and tomorrow and the days after, we have the birth anniversary and then the death anniversary of Imam al-Hadi alayhi salam, the birth anniversary of Imam al-Baqar alayhi salam, then we have the birth anniversary of Imam, al -Imam Ali alayhi salam, Amir al-Mu'mineen, and then we have the famous event that basically marks the beginning of religion for us, which is al-Mab'ath, which is the beginning of the revelation of the Holy Quran to the Prophet in a way where he starts to uh, make that public. So inshallah, we, we spend a little bit of time understanding these events and their significance. And we also have the martyrdom of Imam al-Kadhim alayhi salam in the month of Rajab too. That's one. The second thing is the month of Rajab itself, even from its name, the Tarjib in Arabic, and Rajab basically means to make something great. Greatness, glorifying something and recognizing its greatness. That's one. In addition to that, there is also an, uh, a qualifier that is often added in the narrations when they talk about the month of Rajab. They say Rajab al-Asab. Al-Asab, and we have the explanation in some other narrations that tell us it's like, uh, sab, uh, or sab is to pour something. It is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these narrations we are told, Allah pours His mercy during this month. Okay, so we're starting to understand that there's something very special going on here. Okay, so this is to be kept in mind as this is the general mood of this time. Keep that in mind. In addition to this, if you go through the narrations that talk about the month of Rajab, and we can certainly make an effort, I think, to look a little bit of Fatih al-Janan, other other books that talk about the acts of worship, there is a lot of them. At the beginning of every month, you're supposed to pray a certain prayer, and it's described, it's not long, to provide security for the month, pray it for the month of Rajab. You're supposed to provide, to give a bit of charity. This provides your protection, the protection of your family and loved ones in the month. Do that, don't forget. The reward for these acts and these holy months, beginning with Rajab and then Shaban and Ramadan, is multiplied. So at least try to do those things. In addition, there's clearly narrations that state that there's an added importance to certain specific acts, ritual acts. The major one that is mentioned a lot in the narrations is to fast in the month of Rajab. And we have a lot of them. And maybe throughout the month we can mention some of these narrations. I'll, I'll get you some of the narrations that talk about how much reward there is for fasting a single day in the month of Rajab no matter where it is, and how much reward there is for two days, and three days, and four days, and five days. The Imams are specifically mentioning almost every number of dates possible, days possible to fast, not all of them. There's a few that, that are skipped. I think they're making a point that every day counts and makes a huge difference at the end. To you, it doesn't make a big difference to fast one more day. But in your scale, in your afterlife, in your reward, it will make a huge difference. So if you can add one more day, add one more day. And if it's very difficult and you can only fast one day, then fast that one day. Okay, but fast something in this month. And the more, the better for you. That's one. There's a lot of prayers that can be performed in this month. So inshallah, you can look into some of those and try to do some of them. So inshallah, we may talk about some of that a little bit later. One thing, and inshallah, this is where I'm coming to my point. All of this was kind of the quick general introductions. This is just quick reminders for all of us. The point that I'm trying to make is, if you go back, even before Islam, they recognized the greatness of this month. They considered it, the Arabs, pre-Islamic Arabs, they considered the month of Rajab, along with three other months, Al-Qa'idah, Al-Hijjah, and Muharram, 
They called them Al Ashur Al Hur. And when Islam came, it kept those months. It recognized the greatness of those months, the sacredness of those months. So this tells us first that there is something that was in place even before Islam that remained in place after. That's one. And two, that Islam wanted to keep it in place after it happened. That's one. And two, this is where we get into a little bit more details here. Where did this come from? And where, what did it mean that they consider this to be sacred? The Arabs, we are told, they would say that these are months in which you are not supposed to engage or start, at least start engaging in battle and, and warring and those kinds of activities. And we want to talk a little bit about the significance of that for us. What does that mean? That's one. Two, where does this come from? We have some narrations that explain to us some of the significance of some special days or times in the year. For the month of Rajab, one of the narrations that we have says that this was the day, the first of Rajab was the day when the ship, when the ark of Prophet Noah, Prophet Nuh salam, settled after the flood, it settled on al judi it settled on the mountain. This was a time when those who were saved with Prophet Nuh salam, came down from that ark. So this is seen by a lot of our scholars as representing a beginning. In our normal year, we say in the, today's calendar, Islamic calendar starts with the month of Muharram. Even though, you know, we say if it's based on Hijrah truly, it should be the month of Rabi al awwal because that's when the Holy Prophet actually performed his migration. But as a matter of consensus, that's what it was agreed on, that the first month would be the month of Muharram. They say this is the external normal calendar for the administration of social life, fine. It's like there is a second calendar, a more spiritual calendar, that begins with the month of Rajab. This is the fresh beginning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if, if the greatness of this month is coming all the way down to us from the time of Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to recognize this as an event, something important for humanity. And the, it had, something of it had stayed alive all the way down to the Arabs right before Islam was announced and they recognized its greatness. There is something in there that basically tells us this is the time for a spiritual renewal. After the flood, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants humanity to start given a new chance to start anew, to start fresh. So for us, what does that mean? This is your chance. This is the end of a previous life, the end of a previous cycle, the end of a previous phase, and this is when you start new. And you have to consider this as a timeline that you have so that you start preparing for, and we have talked about this repeatedly, you start preparing for what's to come. You have to start preparing for the month of Sha'ban and specifically the month of Ramadan. You can't enter into the month of Ramadan without preparation. It'll be too late. You can't prepare during the month of Ramadan. That will be a huge missed opportunity. You have to enter the month of Ramadan as clean as possible so that you fully benefit from what you can get out of it. And we say that the climax of the month of Ramadan is in the Ali al-Qadr. Okay, well, we have to prepare to, to fully benefit from them. And you are given this opportunity. You are given the month of Sha'ban, and you are given before that the month of Rajab. And the insistence that we see in the narrations that of the greatness of these months stems from that. That they are supposed to lead to something. But don't waste the opportunity to use them in that way. This is why I say if you go back to the narrations and you say that, you see that it's supposed to be marking a new beginning. A new beginning for humanity, a new beginning for us, each and every one of us. This is maybe why the Holy Prophet, when he talks about the month of Rajab, he says this is the month of Istighfar. 
one of the main acts of worship in the month of Rajab is istighfar, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. Which is what? Which is starting in you. Well, this is your fresh start. And istighfar, of course, is not just saying the words. It's making sure that you can't do istighfar while still sinning. And you can't do istighfar while the effects of the sins are still alive and still present. You have to get rid of those and clean up and clean up internally and bow to yourself. You're not going back. You will do whatever you can not to go back to those sins. And then the words mean something. But this is your chance. When the Holy Prophet says, this is the month of istighfar, the istighfar is probably not going to have the same effect on you if it's performed in this month as if it's as opposed to being performed at another month outside of these three months. So this is your chance. That's one. The second point, and inshallah this is again in preparation. So this is the first one in preparation to the month of Ramadan. Starting a new and preparing ourselves internally, cleaning ourselves through istighfar in the month of Rajah. That's one. The second point is that if the Arabs of Jahili and the Arabs, pre-Islamic Arabs, considered the month of Rajab to be so sacred without having Islam, without the benefit of Islam, that it would be inappropriate during this time to engage in battle and in war. And we're not saying that they always respected their own teachings. They did not. In a lot of cases, they broke their own rules, and then they changed the... The, the sacred months because they felt like attacking and so on and so forth. And that's part of why Islam has to be revealed, to bring things back to the way they're supposed to be. But at least in spirit, and the good ones among them, they respected these months enough that they would not engage in battle. And this speaks to our own internal faculties. When you reach the month of Ramadan, and inshallah we may talk about this, one of the most important objectives of the month of Ramadan is that you learn to discipline yourself internally. The fact that you discipline yourself from not eating and not drinking whenever your body wants you to, it's supposed to be an indication of something even greater. And this is something you find in every spiritual tradition in the world. The need for spiritual discipline. So that something like anger does not overtake you. You are in possession, in full control, in full command of your states. When you see that the month tells you you are not supposed to be in a state where you are ready to engage in battle. So you have to be in the opposite state. This is a state, we may refer to it, for instance, as a state of compassion or a state of mercy. So that battling does not even cross your mind. In our day-to-day -day lives, we, alhamdulillah, we don't have battles to deal with, but we have different types of battles. We have psychological battles, spiritual battles. Don't let anger overtake you. Don't be in a contesting, argumentative, combative spirit during this month. Control yourself, control your feelings, control your anger. This is a preparation to the month of Ramadan. And we have clear narrations that say one of the greatest acts of worship in the month of Ramadan is for someone to leave the month having gained control over their anger, control over their feelings. We all feel things. We all have moments where... We get angry, we get frustrated, we say something and then we regret, we do something and then we regret. This is a 30-day period where you have to be more aware and work on this. This is part of the sacredness that the Arabs pre-Islamically recognized. This is the spirit of this month. So we have to start working on this so that inshallah we continue practicing this during the month of Rajab and in Shaban so that in the month of Ramadan this becomes almost a second nature. And then when we leave, we say at least there's something gained, there's something transformed within us. And I assure you this is something that will change your lives. If you have control over your feelings, if you have discipline over which feeling is appropriate now and which one is not. That's it. That means that your reason is in control, not your feelings. So I'll stop here.